What's up everybody, Alice Ford here. I am hiking up to Blood Mountain today. This is the highest point on the Appalachian Trail in Georgia. I'm also gonna be testing out my new GoPro Hero 9 with Media Mod. We're shooting in 4K at 60 frames today. And I also wanted to talk to you guys about winter gear and what you need when you are hiking in the cold. So I'm pretty excited to share this hike with you guys. And it should be a fun one. I'm actually starting in Vogel State Park, which is a state park here in Georgia. Uh, there's actually a bunch of trails that can take you up to Blood Mountain. I chose this one, it is a little bit longer, it should be a little bit more challenging. So it is rated as hard on all trails and we'll see if it lives up to its difficulty rating. We're just starting to get into some ice and snow on the trail here. It's actually a bit warmer than I was expecting it to be this morning. About 40 degrees when I hit the trail. So I've actually taken off like already a lot of layers, but this is a great time to talk to you guys about what you should wear on a winter hike if you are going out in the ice and snow. So let's just start with base layers because that's basically what I'm wearing right now. On my feet, I do have Gore-Tex insulated boots. Now I think hiking boots are so personal. Everyone likes a different brand. I actually have some decathlon ones on right now. They do have Gore-Tex in them, which is great for keeping your feet warm and dry. And then I've got some wool socks on that go up to about my knee, uh, which I like to wear. And sometimes if I know it's gonna be really cold, I will wear a heated sock. They are a little bit more expensive than a regular sock, but really great if you get cold feet. <laughs> then I've got some insulated leggings on and when it's really cold, I actually usually wear like two pairs of pants. Right now, as I said, it's a little bit warm. So I've just got on my under layer of the insulated leggings and on the top, a kind of insulated shirt also from Decathlon, but I love also Smart Wool as a base layer because it does keep you warm and also wicks moisture really well. So those are some great items to have as your base layer. Obviously you want some sort of hat or headband like I've got on today. And uh, we'll get into a couple more of the things you should wear in a little bit. As I was saying at the beginning, there's quite a few trails up here. We just got up to one of the big junctions here where we're gonna actually kind of make this left turn switch back and continue up the Duncan Ridge Trail up to the summit of Blood Mountain. We're just coming around the back side of the summit. Should be about a mile from the top now. And I'm just putting on my mid layer now. It is getting a little bit windy, a little bit colder out here. And for those of you that might be new to winter hiking, wanting to get into it or just hiking in the cold, a uh, couple of terms, I guess, as far as your layering system. You do want a base layer, a mid layer, and an outer shell when we're talking about what you wear on top. So today this is my mid layer. Lots of great little jackets that you can wear for that. And um, I do have a shell as well, it's for wind. If it does get a little bit colder, I'll be throwing that on too. And you definitely wanna have some good gloves with you. I've got this thin little pair and then I also have a thicker pair as well if the temperatures do get colder. So 
Sadly, right as the wind picked up, I actually lost the wind cover to my microphone. So <laughs> hopefully I find it on the way back down. But I did just want to remind everyone to make sure you know when the hunting season is. It is still hunting season here in Georgia. So if you don't have a red jacket or an orange jacket, you do need to wear a orange vest, which you can usually pick up at like a hardware store and sometimes your local grocery store too. Pretty much just at the summit now of Blood Mountain. I'm actually in the Blood Mountain Shelter. This is a shelter made for people that are hiking the Appalachian Trail. And you can actually have a fire in here. There is a register. There's a privy up here for those hiking as well. So a lot of little amenities for through hikers up here. And it's just a beautiful day. I'm gonna show you guys a little bit more of the summit in just a sec. This shelter, because of COVID, is actually temporarily shut down. Okay guys, we are officially at the summit of Blood Mountain now, just a couple of steps past that shelter there. We made it to the summit and this hike was 4.4 miles according to my watch here and two hours, 20 minutes. So pretty good timing, kept a good pace and I'm just gonna have a cup of hot tea and tell you a little bit more about kind of things that you need if you are coming out winter hiking um, in the cold temperatures. So I always recommend a hot beverage, as I told you guys in uh, my last hike in Grayson Highlands where I saw the wild ponies. Highly recommend you get some sort of thermos with little cups so you can enjoy a hot beverage of your choice. It does make a big difference if you are really cold. But let's go back to the layering system that I was talking about. As I said, it's good to wear two layers on your bottom or at least have another option as far as a top layer that will protect you from wind. When you do get up in higher elevations, you are gonna get the wind chill factor, especially if you're hiking you know, out in the Rockies or the Alps or somewhere where you're going to be at higher elevations. You know, this summit is only um, over, now I don't remember, I think 4,000, 400 or 4,600 4, feet. So pretty low in elevation um, comparatively, but definitely want to make sure you have all those layers. On your top, you do want to have three layers, that base layer of wool, the mid layer of something like this, or another kind of warm mid layer, and then an outer layer of something like a shell that's either rainproof and um, windproof as well. <sighs> Delicious. Today I brought um, cinnamon tea with a little bit of milk. Last time I brought hot cocoa. Drop a comment, let me know what you guys would bring on the trail as well. And then as far as stuff that I also bring in my bag, as you guys saw, this trail was a little bit icy. I did bring a pair of micro spikes in my bag. Um, I've talked about those in some of my other winter hikes. Micro spikes are fantastic. They are essential. You should have them in your bag if you are hiking anywhere where there's ice or potential for ice or snow on the trail. They are a lifesaver in areas where you can't get out of the ice and you have to go through it. Um, you don't want to fall off the side of a mountain. You also, it's nice to bring a trekking pole or two trekking poles. I actually only brought one today. I haven't used it yet, but that's something that's great to have in ice and snow as well for winter hikes. I also have in my bag some gaiters. If you don't know what gaiters are, they are little things that go over the bottom of your pants and the top of your shoe for places where you're gonna be hiking in deep snow. So highly recommend you have a pair of those as well. And then as far as like stuff that goes in your backpack, you know, I've done a gear guide or a backpack guide before of what I carry in my pack. I would say the essentials are like to have your first aid kit sunscreen you should have a sun hat in there even if it's muted skies like this it is good to protect yourself from the sun you want to have ample water 
And then one of the things that I do too is on my Camelback, it's actually not Camelback, it's just a water bladder, but I have this insulated hose here. This actually keeps this from freezing and I put lukewarm water in it when I leave the house so that it's not super cold in there. It does take a little bit longer to cool off um, as well when the temperatures are below freezing. As I said earlier, this hike wasn't that cold. It is probably a below 30 degrees up here at the summit, but not too bad of a day out here. Super pretty trail, really enjoying the summit up here because it's really beautiful. But I'm gonna finish my tea and if I think of some of the other essentials that I didn't mention that I'm wearing today, I will let you know as we head back down. And I'll also have links in the description for any gear recommendations that I talked about today. Um, and you guys, if you have questions, make sure you drop a comment down below too. All right, guys, I am just getting back to the campground where I started this hike at the Vogel State Park. And total of a little over eight miles here to the round trip of this hike. So pretty good mileage there. I actually just saw this really cool salamander um, right as I got back onto the road. And it was actually called a lungless salamander, if you guys didn't know that. So lots of cool wildlife here. I've seen a ton of really cool birds too, red-headed woodpeckers, red robins, bluebirds. Um, so lots of wildlife that you guys can see in the state park, but I hope you guys enjoyed this short little video and if you have questions about winter gear or shooting with the GoPro 9, let me know. It actually did just die. It ran out of battery. So it goes from like 35% to zero for, it's kind of like a GoPro issue <laughs> that I found, but I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure you smash that like button, hit subscribe, turn on the notifications and stay tuned for the next video.